What's up, y'all? This is Jam Horizon back with another review. That's right, I'm here to talk about movies. It's what I do in this life. Anyway, today I watched a ghost story. Or recently I watched a ghost story. Today I'm here talking about it. But this is a film directed by David Lowry, and it came out in 2017. Some of you might know Lowry from his latest film, The Green Knight, which some people thought was pointless and boring. I completely disagree. I think it was one of the best movies to release in 2021. But I digress. The point is, if you were one of the people who watched The Green Knight and said, nothing happens in this movie, then you will hate a ghost story. You will, you will hate it. It is quite literally 90 minutes of Casey Affleck standing around in a sheet. This is not a joke. There's also like a 10 minute scene where, um, it's like a flat shot of Rooney Mara sadly eating pie. And it goes on for like 10 minutes. So if that's your thing, maybe this is the movie for you. But if not, maybe not. So why am I talking about this boring movie? I'm talking about it because it's great. It's a really evocative meditation on loss, grief, and more than anything else, I think it's about our inability to move on. Whether that's from a personal tragedy that we feel trapped in, or even just like a location. Sometimes we'll stay much longer than we should in a place because it's comfortable even if it's not healthy, and I think the movie chews on that idea. So the plot is that Casey Affleck and Rooney Mara, two tremendous actors, an actor and actress that I, I really enjoy all their work, um, they're together, maybe married, I'm not sure, but he dies. Spoilers. Uh, so Rooney Mara grieves, all the while he looks on. He's unbeknownst to her, and he's hanging out in his cute little ghost sheet. And she eventually leaves the house. She moves on with her life, moves out. But Casey Affleck, the poor boy, continues to haunt the house. Other families move in, time passes, and eventually the house is even destroyed. The film goes to several locations after that and even plays with temporality in an interesting way. There's a scene where he finds the bones of pilgrims being shot by Indians or having been shot by Indians, or something like that. And it continues until he is finally ready to move on from this life? I don't want to say life. Death? Whatever. His ghostly form on this planet of Earth. So, why do I like this movie? Why am I talking about it? Let's, let's get back to that. A ghost story is what I would classify as evocative minimalism. It's a film that disregards traditional plotting almost completely. Instead, it relies on the quiet language of its visual style and the force of its tone, which is both somber and meditative. It's not a film that divulges its themes really out loud very often, I think maybe once in a certain party scene, but instead it, it just sort of guides you through the voiceless turmoil of this central character. And that's Casey Affleck in the sheet for the whole movie, by the way. And the resonance of this is far more than it should be because you're just watching a guy in a sheet. And I think that's the power of good direction, good editing, just, I don't know, a strong authorial voice. It's not, I wouldn't call it an experimental film exactly in the way that like a David Lynch or John Waters film could be said to be experimental or Jodorowsky even more so. But it is still certainly left of center. And I will reiterate that if you're somebody who needs momentum in their films, you want things to flow, you want a cohesive, propulsive narrative, Ghost Story ain't the movie for you, Sunshine. No way, no how. But I am extremely interested in the blend of this sad, wistful tonality. And like, really, it, it plays with the grand themes of life. Because death is, whether we choose to face the fact or not in our daily existence, one of the defining elements of life. Life is called life because it is antithetical to death. Two sides of the same coin, they're defined by each other. And to bring all that to the forefront of my consciousness, without having to say a word, is a great thing for a movie to be able to do. And once again speaks to the power 
and vision of the director. Thumbs up, David Lowry. I love The Green Knight, and I love this one. You should come on the podcast, man. I feel like you'd be a great guest. I know you're listening, so get in touch. And that's what I got for you today, folks. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next one.